Hi, dear audience. A very good Monday morning. I am Dr. Laila Rajesh Dhami, a very senior consultant, gynecologist and obstetrician, practicing at Apollo Spectra Hospital, Tarde. So the topic for today is understanding fibroid and the treatment options. But let me begin with that once you receive a report of fibroid, please do not be hassled and worried about it as all fibroids have to be treated differently. So coming to it, what is a fibroid? Fibroid uterus or a fibroid arises from the uterus. It is a smooth, smooth muscle neoplasm. Neoplasm means a tumor or a growth from the smooth muscle cells of the uterus. 99% of the fibroids will come from the uterus. That is the body of the uterus. 0.4% will come from the cervix of the uterus. There may be other fibroids which arise from the ligaments of the uterus, like the uterosacral or round ligament, or from the ovary, mm -hmm. or they can arise from the broad ligament, or there can be parasitic fibroids. So not going into much details about this, what we have to understand is that the body of the uterus, the fibroids present in the body of the uterus will be discussed today. These can be classified. I will just explain to you in short because the medical terms may be a little difficult. So if this hand of mine is the body of the uterus, the fibroid can be attached to the uterus, the purple one. This is the subserous fibroid. This is the cavity of the uterus. If the fibroid is inside the cavity, it is called submucus or intracavity fibroid. The other fibroids can be inside the muscle mass of the uterus, myometrium. So these are called the intramural fibroids. The classification is given in such a way so that every fibroid will manifest differently. The prevalence rate of the fibroid is 20 to 40 percent and it has a strong genetic predisposition. There are cells marked for developing fibroids which can be passed on genetically from generation to generation. And it has been found that certain chromosomes like number 6, 7, 12 and 14 can lead to formation of fibroids. So the genetic predisposition is an important factor in development of fibroids. Next is the hormones the estrogen and progesterone hormones. Fibroid cells are basically sensitive or store more estrogens because they have more estrogen receptors. So amongst the hormones, it is the estrogen which is responsible for the growth of the fibroids. Estrogen by itself cannot induce formation of fibroid. It can help in rather help or cause problem by increasing the growth of the fibroid. So what would be this clinical presentation? How would you come to a doctor? 50% or more than 50% fibroids are asymptomatic, which are diagnosed accidentally when one undergoes ultrasound for any other pathology of the abdomen or pelvis. Or you can have abnormal uterine bleeding or constant pelvic pain. Sometimes large fibroids can give rise to pressure symptoms. Pressure on the bladder causing frequency of micturition 
can cause retention of urine, can cause hydrouretta or hydronephrosis. Then there can be fibroids which can press on the colon, rectum or the sigmoid colon causing constipation. They can also press on the pelvic nerves resulting in radiating or shooting pain in the lower limbs. Then it can present as a distension of lower abdomen when the fibroid is really very large. It will appear like a ball in the lower abdomen. Infertility and also vaginal discharge. There can also be pregnancy related complications in a patient having fibroid with pregnancy. Now, these are the ways how a person can present clinically with fibroid uterus. What are the risk factors? The major risk factor is nulliparity or oligoparous. Oligoparous means people having just one child or maybe two. In earlier days, when multiparity was there, when people used to, ladies used to deliver three to four children, fibroids were not known. But nowadays, with increasing age of marriage, with postponement of childbearing, the incidence of fibroid has increased. Other factor is early menarche. The menarche normally starts between age of 11 to 12, but nowadays we are seeing as early as 9. So early menarche and late menopause is bombarded continuously with estrogen and this can be responsible for fibroid formation if you are genetically predisposed. Family history is very, very important because the First related people, uh, ladies can get fibroids during their lifetime. Obesity. Now, how come obesity play a risk factor? Abdominal obesity, the fat contains androgens. And these androgens are converted into estrogens. So the estrogen levels in the body increase and hence the fibroids will grow. Then other metabolic disorders contribute to this, like hypertension and diabetes. So these are the risk factors which we have to deal with. And then how to go about further. So how do we diagnose a fibroid? We diagnose by history, clinical examination and investigation. History, most important is any family member having history of fibroid, any menstrual disorders like heavy bleeding or severe pain during menses or infertility or abnormal vaginal discharge, any of this in the history has to be noted down. Coming to the investigations, most of the times it is simple ultrasound which will diagnose fibroids. But Fibroids which are small, less than one centimeter, may be missed at ultrasound. The next is saline infused sonography. This helps definitely in diagnosing fibroids better than a routine ultrasound. Of course, the best method is MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, which not only tells us the size, but it tells us the location of fibroids and helps in mapping of the fibroid for the treatment purpose. The invasive methods will be hysteroscopy and laparoscopy. MRI, hysteroscopy and laparoscopy guide us to proper diagnosis of fibroids, whereas in hysteroscopy and laparoscopy, one can operate immediately on diagnosing the fibroid if need arises. So after investigating and diagnosing fibroid uterus, what treatment do, can be offered? 
the first treatment offered is wait and watch. Why do we wait and watch? Because more than 50% of the fibroids are asymptomatic. So we wait, we ask the patient to follow up regularly so we can pick up if there is any other problem occurring. The next line is medical line of treatment. Medical line, there are many medicines available, but this is a short term treatment. When we are waiting for some definite treatment, we give a medical line of treatment. Because as soon as you stop the medicines, the fibroids will come back. Surgical therapies. Surgical therapies done in expert hands with proper equipments gives nearly 99% of result and the patients go home happy. What we deal in is hysteroscopy. When the fibroid is inside the uterine cavity, you remove with hysteroscopy or laparoscopic myomectomy or there is an open myomectomy. These are for conservation of uterus. If childbearing is over, there are multiple fibroids and a lot of symptoms like abnormal bleeding or pain, then we tell the patient to undergo hysterectomy. Of course, always taking age into consideration and patient's consent also for removal of the uterus. Uterus also can be removed either by open method, can be removed vaginally or by laparoscopic surgery, also by robotic surgery. There are other methods of uh, treating fibroids like uterine fibroid embolization. That is, you embolize the vessels which are feeding the fibroid and then the growth of the fibroid stops temporarily. MRI guided focused ultrasound surgery can be done and laparoscopic myolysis. Myolysis is used when we have small fibroids and laparoscopically by using energy sources like laser, cryopro or bipolar pottery, we myelize the fibroid so it shrinks in size. Now what is the question in everybody's mind is what is the concern related to malignancy? Now I would like to clear one fact that extremely rare for a fibroid to undergo malignant change just about 0.5% and hence, anyone having a fibroid should not worry about malignancy, but always remain in contact with your gynecologist and do the investigations as and when necessary as told by your gynecologist. So what I would like to conclude and what I would like you to remember that fibroids are the most common benign tumors in the reproductive age. They will grow in the reproductive age but start regressing when menopause comes. They can present themselves in various ways like abnormal bleeding, spotting, pain, pressure symptoms, pressure on the nerves, that medical management has limited role. Ultrasound is a good equipment to diagnose fibroids. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, very small fibroids cannot be picked up by ultrasound. Surgical management of fibroids may be open, laparoscopic, hysteroscopic or robotic, gives very promising results and if carried out for right indication and gives near complete cure. The other modalities of treating fibroids like MRI guided ultrasound 
or embolization are there, but then these also have a very limited role in treatment of fibroid. So friends, with this I would like to say that once the diagnosis of fibroid is made, do not get scared. Please visit us so that we can guide you absolutely properly whether you require any treatment or you don't require any treatment. Thank you.